So my first question for you is this. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Correct. What does that mean to you? And why am I asking you that, that uh, about that particular Bible verse, Colossians 3.23? We got, I think you can use that Bible verse all around in life in general. That's your favorite verse. It's favorite verse, yeah. yeah. And we establish our foundation based out of, out of that verse. We being at G1? Yes. So what program. does G1 stand for now that we're getting into it? So G1 stands for God first. And we definitely want to just have that foundation in our program to kind of show the kids that this is just more than just basketball. This is about life, building character and just showing who God is and what he expects from us, not just in sports, but in life. So, Is it more of Christian parochial? Do you take people of other faiths as well? Anyone. Anyone is, uh, you know, we, we take everybody. You know, anyone can join a program. You know, we don't slam the people with the, the Bible over the head, but we do have something that we do every day in practice is we pray. We pray just to kind of start off the, our day with just prayer and just showing the kids that, you know, we want to have that in our life we just want to have that relation with our with god and uh, just having that i think it's important i had an interesting conversation with a, a, a priest in new york uh who uh, officiated a wedding um who spent a lot of time going out to work with artists uh very avant-garde and very progressive very liberal uh ostensibly non-churchy artist and his notion was is i don't talk to them about I don't ask them to come to church. I don't talk to them about God. I bring church to them in a way. Mm-hmm. Is that what you're doing? Are you exactly, doing something? exactly what we're doing. So is is it God through basketball? Or is it basketball through God? What is it? Right now, for us, is just leading by example and just being a light in our community, and that's our approach. We are talking to Rolo Nunez, founder, director, and head coach of G1 Elite Basketball product of San Fernando Valley. You're about about 6'3", six, 6'4"? Six, yeah. Lefty or righty? Righty. Okay. And you were a two, small forward? I was a guard. Yeah, I played I played mainly guard, shooting guard. Yeah, you were known as a lights-out shooter back in your day. Uh, a little bit. So you played in Peru. You also played in Mexico. Correct. In Mexico, between seasons, that's where you got the calling. Can we talk about that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, absolutely. So Shepherd's Church offered you position, newly uh, developed basketball club, yep. head coach. Mm-hmm. What happened? <laughs> what happened there? You know what? Um, I've always been around the game of basketball, right? Whether I'm playing, I'm just volunteering. You, so can you say that a little? Uh, yeah. So you've all... I'll, I've always wanted to just help out the community. Okay. And one of those ways was my church was offering, you know, training for kids. This and was I, in Mexico? Or? No, this was at Shepherd of the Hills Church. Okay. And so in between my time of playing pro basketball, I just volunteer at the church, show up, and just ask if they needed help or any basketball training. And so I would go out train the kids during the summer, and then right after the summer was over, i head back to Mexico and play pro basketball. So you were, you've been a man of faith for a long time. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. So, yeah, I've been just, you know, as a man of faith, I just always wanted to be uh, using the game of basketball as a tool to kind of uh, share my faith. And just, uh, so once I felt like it was time for me to step away from the game of basketball, I thought, you know, this is a good opportunity for me to coach and have uh, the kids grow up in the game of basketball learning about God and just using basketball as a tool to do that. You were talking about you, you felt the call to take the next step in your journey uh, with your faith when you accepted the position at Shepherd's Church. Is that correct? So I grew up being a Christian since I was like 18, 19 years old. Yeah. And that's through, when you were baptized? That was when I was baptized, yeah. And so right when I decided to give my life to the Lord, I started just, you know, kind of taking, taking pride on that, you know. And so when I started coaching and training, I was like, you know what, this is what I want to do. And so when I felt like I was led to kind of be more of a, a role model as a coach, I started, you know, thinking about my own program of who I want to start, what, what, what we want to do outside of Shepherd of the Hills. And that's when I started G1 League Basketball. So Shepherd of the Hills was in Mexico or was in the United States? No, it was the United States in Porter Ranch. I see. So you were, you came back in the off season. Yeah. That's when you received your calling. Correct. And then you decide from there to open your own facility program. program. Yeah. And, and that was called G1 Elite. Correct. How long ago was that? This is about five years now. Were you nervous at all? That's a big step. Oh, yeah. It was a huge step. You know, I had no idea how to start a program, where I was going to practice How did you start? I mean, 
how do you lift from from the ground up? How do you start? You know what? Um, I prayed on it, and I just started making phone calls as well, just kind of seeing what gyms I can use, what where we're gonna practice, where we're gonna base out a program. And um, God opened those doors, man. A little pray, pr- prayer while walking, as, as it were? Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. you know, throughout my time of just, like, ups and downs, I found a, a small local church where we're from in Chatsworth, and they opened the doors to us and just said, hey, nobody's using the gym here. You guys are free to use it. And so that was a huge blessing for me. Wow. You know, out of obedience of just praying and just kind of letting God lead. I was just uh, able to use that facility for quite some time. How did they find out that you were looking, or how did you find out that they had an open space? So, funny story, um, I was actually already booked at Heritage Christian School to run practices there. Okay. And then they started telling me that due to school events, we're going to have to start uh, limiting your practice time. And eventually, they just kind of had to tell me, you know what, I don't think it's going to work out. And so was that a, that was that was too, that was unfortunate. Were you saddened about that? Frustrated? I, I, I was frustrated, and I was just disappointed because I was like, okay, now what we're gonna do? This so, is your first year. This is my first year, and so I was living with my in-laws at the time. And I woke up one morning. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go to the gym. I'm just gonna try to clear my head. And right before I walk out the door, I see my father-in-law looking out at his yard, just kind of standing there. And in the window, looking in out the his window, yard. just kind of like staring at his eyes. And so God put it in my heart, like, why don't you go ask him what he's thinking? And I'm like, I don't want to do that. Like, I just want to go out and just kind of clear my head a little bit. So okay. I ended up talking to him and we had a great conversation and we were talking about what a man is to be with, to his wife and his daughters. You're what, asking what your that, father-in-law this. Yeah. And, How and long just, have you been married at that point? This is uh, probably my first or second year of being married in the middle, what, yeah was he happy that you were a man of faith marrying his daughter absolutely absolutely and was he a, he's a man of faith as well he is he is um he wasn't necessarily walking with the lord at the time but he was uh, a man that believed in god and i wanted to be an example to, to him and just kind of share my faith with him who i am as a christian in that moment or just in general and, in that moment as well right so he knew who i who i am right like but so after our prayer with him, that that moment, I look across the street and I see my buddy. His name is uh, Doc. Wait, were you praying with him? After? I was praying, and after wait, our, wait with him, you guys engaged in prayer. Yeah, after yeah you, we, we, he's standing at the window, looking out. You decide because you've been moved to do so to walk over and talk to them. At some point during that process, you guys start to pray. We started to pray, and after my prayer was, did over, you normally pray with him? I did. I did it. I've was that the first time? That. that was the first time. That. that was my first time. Oh my doing gosh! That with him. Yeah. So. As soon as our prayer was over. Wait, how long was that conversation? It was Two minutes, 20 minutes? 15 minutes. minutes. And then you, how do you broach the topic? Do you say, do you want to just join hands and pray? Like, how do you do that? So, yeah, I was just like, hey, you know what, Adam? I think it, let's just pray right now. Did, well, how did he respond? He was like, absolutely. He was not freaked out no, by it? No, not at all. So just you two are two men, uh-huh. generationally separated, but connected through, among other things, his daughter. Mm-hmm. You say should, we should pray. He said, you guys just you close your eyes, bow your head, yeah. join hands. That's what, it, yeah. And then you're praying with him. Yes. Are you leading the prayer? I was, yeah. Was he nervous at all? I didn't sense he was nervous. I think he was just open to it. You know, he was just like, okay, let's do this. You know, that was his first time that ever happened. First time that ever happened. So you're leading him through prayer and what happens? So as soon as we're done with our prayer. How long was the prayer, by the way? 20 seconds, two uh, minutes? It was a, probably about a minute or so. What'd you get into? Like... You know what? Because we were talking about my daughters and his daughters, I was like, "Your daughters? You have two daughters? I have three daughters now. But at the moment, at that time, I had two daughters. He had two daughters, so there's some symmetry there. But obviously, there are his grandkids. Yeah. And what were you talking about? And we had that conversation about what a man looks like, you know, to the daughter, to to our daughters, right? And what that, what we kind of, what kind of example we want to set for them. Okay. So we prayed about that, and as soon as my prayer was over, I look across the street. And I noticed a friend was looking at an open house. As he, as you guys finish the prayer, does he walk off? Is he just standing there? I'm just there? standing there. You're just standing there in the window, standing after a prayer, and just like being two yes. men yes. in the moment of God. Yeah. Okay. You look across the street. And I you see your my friend. Buddy. So I, buddy from high school? No, just basketball. Okay. Right? We, we just around playing basketball in okay. adult leagues. And I noticed my friend's looking at an open house. And I just go out there and call out his name. What's his name? His name is Doc. 
you go and say, what's up, Doc? Did you what's say what's up, up Doc? Doc? Yeah. <laughs> Did you, oh, my God. <laughs> Not that that's the first time he got that in his life. Right, you say, no. But you literally went out and said, what's up, Doc? Yeah, what's up, Doc? He turned around, and we started chopping it up. And he tells me, hey, man, it's good to see you. I haven't seen you in a long time. Why don't you come over to this church? I just got hired as a pastor at this local church. Did, oh, so you guys knew you were both people of God when yeah. you were playing ball growing. Okay, okay, yeah. go ahead. Um, and he goes, there's this gym. Um, we could just shoot around and catch up at our church. And I just look at him like, there's no way. Like, I'm like, by any chance, does anyone ever use it during the week? He goes, no, nobody's ever there. And I'm like, no way. So now I ask... I don't ask at the moment because I didn't want to be about, hey, let me go in there. Transactional. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I just want to give it some time. But I call him up a few days later and it's like, hey, Doc, by any chance, would it be okay for us to come in there and run G1 practices? To which, were you nervous when you asked him that? A little bit. Okay. Why were you nervous? Were you nervous he was going to say no? Were you nervous that you were broaching a topic about business that, you know, crossed the line from friendship? Like, what were you nervous about? I was nervous that you just say no or it's not available, that other people are already using it. Okay. And so, but then when he said, "Hey, nobody ever uses it. You're welcome to use it." Yeah, I my jaw just dropped, and but at the same time, I just was so grateful and, and and just knowing that God, through my obedience of listening to say, "Hey, go talk to your father-in-law," and just spend some time with him, as I was able to see my friend across the street and be you know open to let allowing us to come over and use this gym. So I thought that was pretty awesome. So you start. You start there, you start training there after that profound experience, mm-hmm. one, two, three, mm-hmm. you start training there and that was the launch point, really the, the, the foundation for your, your entire G1 Elite. Correct. That's amazing. Yeah, Are you, you know, still friends it, now? It, yeah, we're very good friends. Uh, but what the coolest part about it is, it's the gym, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles, right? It, it's a rinky-dink gym, holes in the walls, but we can't, I, I loved it because it kind of brought us to this perspective like you know not everything's going to be all the glamour you got to go out there and work for it you got to make sure that you appreciate the things that you have you know um so i was it i think the parents loved it as well because it showed like hey humble beginnings this is where we start this is how everything you know this is where the grind starts um so it was it was pretty great and an awesome experience are you still training there we are not. So now at the time, now it's been five years now, uh, God again opened another door for me to be a varsity coach at Faith Baptist. Where is that? For people who don't know where Faith Baptist is, not familiar with Southern California basketball, explain where we are now, where that is, where are the old high school, where so are the old gym So it's Los Angeles, California, but in the middle of the San Fernando Valley, yep. out in Canoga Park. Okay. And that's where it's located. So you're coaching there. Yes. And you're also running G1. Mm-hmm. How are you able to balance the two things? So with team, right, you know, you can't do this on your own. I have awesome support from my coaches and even some parents that volunteer and help me out from time to time. So That's wonderful. And you coach how many grades? So we have grades from first all the way to eighth grade as of right now. When you're coaching, are you are you coaching God first? You're coaching basketball and then get to know basketball through God, God through basketball on a very practical day-to-day sense? Like, how does it work? So... In the middle of practice, I'll just stop practice and just talk about what what it means to, let's say, if I say, hey, I want you guys to be disciplined. And I think God, and then I'll go say, in the Bible, this is what it talks about, to have discipline and to just trust the process. God is not always going to give you everything you were asking for, right? you got to make sure that he knows the, your what's in your heart and what you, what you want. But that doesn't does mean he's always going to give you what you want because he knows what you need. He's going to give you what you need, not what you want. But through that, man, you just got to work through it and continue to trust that, you know, he knows what's best for you. Um, so in the middle of practice, I'll kind of stop and talk about a little bit of that, a little bit of this, different topics. Yeah. Um, but that's how I do it, man. It, it, and it's not about, you know, hey, guys, uh, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need this uh, to get you know what you want you got to make sure that you just continue to pray on it continue yeah. to help you know have god lead you on um, the things that you want so my question to you is is do you think that god puts difficulty in your way to develop your faith or do you develop your faith through 
finding God through difficulty or communing with God through difficulty? I think God allows things to happen. Like he, it, we, we pray for things, right? We ask, hey, God, I, I want you to help me to become more patient. I think he'll give you opportunity to be more patient, right? Yeah. So he, he presents things in front of you to say, hey, man, I know you've been wanting this. This is how we're going to prepare to get there. It might not be right now, but eventually I'm going to help you see, okay, this is what we need to do. And this is, I, I have big plans for you. And um, I want you to trust me that this is how it's going to work. Are you still in communion with your father-in-law in terms of how, how you approach your faith? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, we don't always have those intimate one-on-one -on -one moments. Just, just very uh, open to having any conversation. Yeah. You know, I go up to him, ask for advice and different things. But, you know, he's he knows that my my faith is the most important thing for for me and my family and i think he appreciates that did, were you always able to have a good relationship with your father-in-law or did it take some time did no, he know luckily uh, you know it was a situation where he was very friendly and we we hit it off from the, from, from the start how how long did you know his daughter before you asked her for marriage man um it wasn't that long you know we i proposed to her probably like 11 months after dating how fast did you know you wanted to marry her I kind of knew almost right away, you know, um, because she came to actually where I was working at. We met at Shepherd the Hills Church. What was she doing there? She was there to watch a basketball game with her friends. Uh -huh. And I look over my shoulder like, yo, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> so I introduced myself. Uh, kids, that's what we call W Riz. She <laughs> starts rolling up on her. I'm sorry, go ahead. Let's do a play by play. How did that happen? So did I you coach, over, you call a timeout? Did you look over you and You know give her what? A I was refereeing a basketball adult league game. Okay. Because me being so i was working there right now you know they hired me and i, I was doing different things for the program so i was refereeing uh, refereeing a game confirm or deny that after you saw her but before you talked to you went into the hallway and got in some push-ups and sit-ups <laughs> <laughs> and walked over to her yeah definitely i think yeah any if i had that opportunity i would have but so, since it was in the middle of the game i was just like you know what in this time out let me go over here real quick did you really introduce myself you, yeah. you introduced yourself that yeah, way i did you didn't know her friend you just didn't i knew her friend so that was my way to to kind of have that conversation yeah. i w went over to her friend and just said hey beverly this is uh, go ahead you know, hey who, who's your friend you know what are you guys doing here and we just you know started that i mean cheesy lines could have abounded like and <laughs> could have called a technical foul yeah. on you know i mean all kind of stuff that would have been good that would have been good yeah. so is it true word on the street is that you had to play your father-in-law to be one-on-one -on -one to earn his daughter's hand in marriage and you beat him 12 nothing is this true <laughs> i don't know i made that up it's i think that would have been a lot easier for sure <laughs> understood so you have three daughters now i do you're coaching people young men only or young men and women it, it's a co it, we, we're open to having girls play with the boys yep. so sometimes we do have girls play uh with our guy team but how, how old are your daughters eight seven and one are they the one year old. Are they playing at all with you in terms of formalized this basketball? This is their first year playing rec ball. Okay. You know, How's it going? Are you just pulling out your hair on the sideline? You know what? I, I let them have fun. I don't make it a big deal. I let them do what they want to do. If they want to play basketball, it's great. But it's something that, you know, I've said it from the beginning when we had kids. That I'm never going to force them to play basketball. You know, just because I'm in the game, I'm, I'm around it a lot, doesn't mean that they have to. Yep. And whatever they aspire to be, man, I'm going to be a support to them. So right now, it's all about having fun. Whatever okay. they want to do, let's do it. And you're coaching your kids in G, a G1, right. G1 Elite. Uh, is it more about development or is it more about winning or is it something else entirely? Is it finding God? You know, it's always great to, to win, right? Everybody wants to win and compete. So that's my biggest thing is as long as we go out there and compete. Yeah, you know, uh, we want to develop the kids in practice. We work on skill work. We work on the fundamentals, and we don't necessarily work on twenty different plays. I think the most important thing is to help them get ready for high school basketball, and that's what we want to do: is put them in position where they're going to succeed in, in high school. Well, you talk get, about one of your one of your your, your your sayings or one of the things they, they say that you you coach is you want people to be prepared to compete at the highest levels of basketball, but in life too. Is that correct? correct. Correct. And that's that's our biggest thing is I, you know, when I look at a, a kid misbehaving or being disrespectful, I look at him like, man, I care more about you, who you are as a person, more than who you are as a basketball player. So let's work on this. We got to do better. 
let's correct this so we can, um, when you're out there in the world, you're able to respond in a certain way where you're like, you know what? I, this is this is the right approach here. What has been your darkest moment as a coach? Or as someone who's running a program? The, the, the um, you know, scariest, the darkest moment? Darkest moment, uh, and and it's it was something that I'll never forget, is we had a player uh, be diagnosed with cancer. And what grade was this? How old was he? He was 12 years old, so about sixth grade. How many years ago? This was when I was at Shepherd Hills Church, so this is about eight or nine years ago okay. um, and it was heartbreaking right so for him to pass away it was it was something that um very tragic and my heart goes out to the family to this day because you never want to oh. see your child you know go through that and then but um one gleam of light was that we presented an opportunity we, we we got the kids together in the middle of a huddle this is before we knew he had cancer and I had a pastor with me and he was there to kind of lead the group and say, hey guys, we're going to talk about accepting Jesus today. And we're not going to make this public. We want you guys to close your eyes and we just want this is between you and God. Um, and it, whoever wants to accept Jesus and you feel like you don't have that relationship with Jesus, we want you guys to just close your eyes and, uh, close your eyes and raise your hand. And me being the, the coach and the director, I kind of wanted to take a peek. Uh-huh. Did you? And so I did. And hopefully this is me, you know, seeing that everybody already has that relationship with God, but also seeing who else is questioning and seeing who's not sure. Yeah. And the only kid that raised his hand was Jonathan, who had, who was diagnosed with cancer. And he raised his hand. And then, so we put our hands over him, we prayed over him and, um, well, a few months later is when we found out he had cancer and uh, he passed away probably a year after that. But it was a dark moment, but at the same time, it was something that I'll never forget. And um, it, it's just dear to my heart to, to know that he he rose, he rose raised his hand to accept Jesus um, and he wanted to have that relationship with him. So, and, and in the corner of my eye, I look over and I look at his dad and he's just in tears breaking down because he, they, they never encountered that, right? They, they, they probably never went to church before that. And so for him to experience his son, raise his hand and want to devote his life to Christ, I thought that was pretty awesome. And you know, for me, this is why we run G1. And, and not only that, but we have moments, right? Every, like here, there's a kid, we run a little rec league for our program. It's for kids that don't necessarily have the opportunity to play club ball or feel like they're not ready. We run this rec league. And I remember two weekends ago, I gave a kid a jersey and I, I'm hap I happen to stand right outside the gym and I'm looking and his dad and this, this kid, he puts on his jersey and he takes a picture with his jersey on outside and you could tell he's just pumped. Like he's smacking his arms and his hands. He's like, all right, let's do this. And I could tell this is his first time ever putting on a jersey. And I'm like, that's what it's about. And I share that with his dad. I was like, you know what, man? I, that almost brought me to tears, man, because this is why we're doing this. To, for him to have that moment and be excited to play, I thought that was pretty awesome. You know, for th those are the kind of moments as a coach, man, and as a parent and somebody that just loves the game, you see the kid be that excited. Um, that, those are pretty cool moments. Founder, director, head coach of G1 Elite Basketball. Lead pastor at the Church of Hoops, <laughs> Rolo Nunez. I very, very much appreciate the conversation. It's been fantastic. Thanks for having me, man. Thank you. Good appreciate luck it. out there and good luck on all the stuff you're doing. Thank in the you so much, guys. Appreciate you. Thank you.